Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. So unexpectedly, <laughs> you guys just saw I had a couple of piggies I did some health checks on because we actually just ended up going and getting a couple of guinea pigs that somebody was rehoming in our town and I really wasn't planning on getting any more animals, but I kind of just couldn't say no to them. It's two little boys. Um, I'm gonna weirdly I'm like I know how to tell whether guinea pigs are boys or girls but for some reason with them I'm second guessing myself so I'm gonna go grab one of my boy pigs and double check when I'm done with them but I'm pretty sure they're both boys they're definitely both the same gender um and I don't think they're very old so I'm going to get them a quarantine cage set up for this evening um you guys might have seen a little bit I have a couple of clips from us in the car but they are on cedar so we're getting them off the cedar bedding. They have a fresh pile of hay. They're in a carrier here right now. Um, but I'm going to get them a quarantine cage set up. For tonight, we're just gonna put them in um, the cage that we got them in so that everything's not brand new. But we're gonna get them some hay. We're gonna get them some fresh water and pellets. But the main thing is I want to get them off of that cedar. So I just did a little bit of a health check with them just to see kind of in general what condition they're in. So I will tell you guys a little bit more about them in a little bit. I'm going to get them settled first. Right now my boyfriend is dumping that cedar out, which is why I have this couple of minutes to talk. But I will set their cage up and then show you guys and then tell you a little bit more about them. So I wanted to sit down and tell you guys a little bit more about the pigs and the situation that they came from. So first, let's just talk about the situation and how I ended up with them. Basically, um, one of my friends sent me a Facebook post, which I get sent Facebook posts about rehoming guinea pigs all the time because my friends know I have a lot of guinea pigs and they know that I am planning on starting an animal rescue. So because of that, people send me Facebook posts all the time and I don't respond to most of them because I can't take in all the guinea pigs right now. We don't have the space or the resources. But in this particular instance, somebody sent me this Facebook post and the girl had put up some information about the situation and she had put up pictures of their cage and the guinea pigs themselves. And honestly, if she hadn't put up those pictures of the cage, I probably wouldn't even have really taken a second look at it, but I will show you guys the cage that they were in. So it is a pet store cage. You can see they're on some sort of shavings. They, she had hay for them, but they didn't really have any in their cage. Um, they did have pellets and they only had one Heidi, which only one of them would fit in the Heidi comfortably at a time. So overall their setup was not the best. So I kind of took it to pig dad and I was like, hey, maybe we should take a look at getting these pigs. And he basically was like, let me know when you want to pick them up because that's how he is. So I reached out to her and basically got some more information. Um, she said that she had been given the guinea pigs. They like took them in from someone else. So she didn't like go out to the pet store and buy them. She had actually got them from a different rehoming situation. But she also had four kids and a couple of dogs, and she said she realized pretty quickly that they were way more work than she could put in. So at this point, she was essentially looking to find a new home for them as soon as possible. And I actually talked to her Friday morning for the first time, I think, and we picked them up Friday evening. So it was pretty quick. She wanted them gone, and it ended up just working out perfectly that we could go get them. When we brought them home on Friday, the first thing that I did was, first off, I made sure they were actually both boys, which they were. And then I did a little bit of a health check just to see if there was any obvious issues, if we needed to make a vet trip, and to kind of determine how long I wanted to quarantine them. 
So once I did the health check, and I will tell you guys a little bit about what I noticed during the health check in a minute, but after I did the health check, I immediately took their cage and dumped out all the cedar because they were actually on cedar bedding, which if you don't know, cedar is pretty much the worst bedding to keep any animal on. I honestly don't know of any animal that can live on cedar and like be healthy. So I immediately got them off of that and put them on fleece, but I did leave them in their pet store cage because I didn't want to completely overwhelm them their very first night. So I did set it up with fleece, got them a big pile of fresh hay and water and got them a second Heidi and then kind of just let them relax for the evening. I did keep an eye on them because they were quarantining, so I wanted to make sure they didn't have any signs of illness or anything like that, um, so that I could determine like when I could move them into the pet room, basically. So like I said, I did health check them, and honestly, they were overall very healthy. I didn't see any signs of respiratory issues, um, I was worried about that because of the cedar, but they don't have any signs of any issues or any illnesses. They didn't have any injuries. I did do some nail clipping because their nails were a little bit overgrown, um, but overall both of them were pretty healthy. I did name them, so their names are Ron and Neville, and Ron is the one with the little orange face, and he's short-haired, and he has a mohawk down his back, and he was in pretty much perfect shape. I didn't see any issues with him. He seemed like an overall really healthy pig, and then the other one's name is Neville. He is long-haired, so I was kind of expecting him to, you know, have his hair be kind of a mess, but overall he was in pretty good shape as well. I did cut some mats out of the back of his fur, and then I did know Notice a couple things with him that I wanted to talk about. So when you are rescuing animals, this is kind of the thing that you need to be ready for because you never know what you're going to get. So, so when I was looking at Neville, when I very first picked him up and did his health check, the first thing I noticed is that I'm very, fairly certain that he is blind in one eye. So one of his eyes is all like cloudy and milky on the inside, like he had an ulcer maybe that never healed or he had an eye poke that was not attended to, but his eyes are black so it's pretty obvious that you can see he has um, something going on with that eye. And just from his behavior over the last couple of days, I do think he is at least mostly blind in that eye. It doesn't seem to affect him at all, but I just wanted to mention that. And then the other thing is I think Neville's teeth are a little bit overgrown. Um, they are line, they do line up, so they're not like misaligned or anything like that. But I think the lack of hay being in their cage at all times um, led his teeth to be a little bit overgrown. He definitely can eat pellets because I saw him eating a lot of pellets and I have seen him eat hay. So I think just having hay available all the time is going to go a long way. I am taking them to the vet, not until September 18th, so it's going to be a couple of weeks. Um, I felt like we could wait because overall they're really healthy, he can eat, they're not having any issues, and there's nothing obvious that I felt like we needed to rush to the vet for. So if there is any dental work that needs done, the vet of course can let us know and we can do it at that point. But I think a couple of weeks honestly of just eating hay and having good quality hay available is going to make a huge difference for him, but I did want to mention that as well. So I did quarantine them. I had them set up in a quarantine cage and I actually only left them in a separate room for um, just one day, basically to keep an eye on them, make sure they didn't have any signs of anything they could spread to anyone else basically. But I really wanted to get them out of their pet store cage and get them into a bigger cage. So I'm gonna show you guys setting up their new cage in the pet room. I did make sure that they couldn't touch noses with anyone and you guys will see that, but I just wanted to mention that um, I made it pretty much so that they couldn't spread anything anyways being in the pet room, which you guys will see. But let's go ahead and show you their new setup.
so I have their little cage area set up here. It's a two by four and you can see I do have some Coroplast that I put between the two cages so they can't touch noses or really have direct access to each other. The new pigs don't show any signs of any type of illness or anything like that or else I wouldn't be putting them in the pet room yet but I just want to put that there as a precaution and it's two cages of boys so I don't want them to be fighting across grids or anything like that. So have the plastic there. This is somewhat of a temporary setup so those grids along the back are not grids I would want to have on a permanent basis because they can chew them but this is going to be kind of temporary. I have ordered new grids for all of the cages and we are contemplating moving the pet room to a bigger room in our house so I'm not going to go into that in this video but I did want to mention that we probably will be moving all of the pets from this room in the kind of near future but this is their temporary setup or their setup for the next couple of months at least. It's much better than the pet store cage they are in. So we are going to go ahead and finish setting their cage area up and I'm going to go ahead and move them over into the pet room into their new cage.